Uh, hello everyone, in this FAQ tutorial we are going to uh, simulate a very old mechanic problems. This is a, a steel plate which has a 100 centimeters length and 40 centimeters weight and a thickness of 8 millimeter. So uh, a uniform pressure is applied in the top of the plates and then we want to determine the stress distribution in the direction of 1 and direction 2 and additionally the midpoint of this plate displacement. So the plate is actually restrained or constrained in the one side fixed, in the other side only the direction one is allowed to. The pro a, a problem can be solved as a linear and also non-linear. So for this tutorial, we will consider linear first, and in the next tutorial, we will consider non-linear. For the linear, we need only elastic modulus and a Poisson ratio of 0.5. So we jump to the program in order to model this kind of uh, uh, complex uh, examples. So we go to the... Uh, uh, program and we uh, go to part and draw we can call it shell you can also uh, model it as a uh, as a solid but the computational time will be uh, longer than that shell because we're using meter newton and kilogram so we use a uh, very problem inside of three meters by three meters in the size of our uh, work so this is shell and we're using a 3d deformable shell planner and then i will draw a simple rectangular shape so the first thing is I'm going to delete these constraints uh, of uh, perpendicularity, this one and this horizontal, these things, in order to uh, modify the picture. Additionally, I will add some constraint using these two uh, uh, lines should be parallel, and then uh, these two lines should be always vertical together, vertical and vertical. Now the first thing is I want to generate the inclination angle, so I'm going to take calculate this angle should be. 60 which then will give me 30 and that with the x direction now it's okay now we're going to give the dimension of our model which is uh, 0 0.4 meter and uh, uh, this point to this point should be one meter so this is the uh, the, the plate and uh, next we go to the uh, material and we define the material first as elastic i can call it elastic steel and we have the density so seven eight seven hundred uh, seven thousand eight hundred kilonewton per cubic meter and we have the elastic modulus which is uh, 200 e power of 9 which is become pascal 0 0.3 now we have defined the material so we must uh, assign and define some section which is called section shell and the thickness is uh, 0 0.08 which is called 8 millimeter, and then we assign the section here. Additionally, we should define the, uh, the orientation. In order to define the orientation of the stress stress because it's inclined, we should define a, 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 a local coordinate. So the local coordinate can be bottom, and we have three ways to do it. So I'm going to use uh, three lines as are called uh, rectangular. So I'm going to continue. So select the straight line, so this is the first line, and uh, select the straight line to be in the x, y plane. So this is the second line. So I'm going to call it cancel. So we have uh, this one here in the in this area. Additionally, uh, I'm going to uh, assign now the direction of the the, uh, the orientation of the material I must select it and I must come to the data which already defined. So now you can see the direction one is this direction, direction two is in the uh, y, and normalize this one. So I'm gonna keep it okay. So uh, we can, uh, uh, before we go further, we want to uh, determine a point in the middle to measure the displacement. And, and, and for this case, we go to the uh, uh, create portation and we want to take the face using uh, uh, there is a different way to do. So I'm going to using a uh, shortest path between two points. Uh, so I'm going to select this one and I'm going to select this point and this point, which is the middle. So additionally, uh, to find a point, we come to the edge and then we want to enter parameters. So select the edge and it asks me to uh, define so which is the 50%. Of the that line, so okay. So we generated one point. Uh, now I can actually uh, define that point as a set for me, called set, or I can call it, uh, um, uh, I can call it um, midpoint, mid 
point and select that point now uh, we are done in the material uh, definition and also uh, orientation we go to the assembly we assign the and uh, we don't need anything to this assembly we go to the step in the step we will uh, call it step one the static so it's linear we don't need to uh, activate the nonlinear geometry and we can give uh, 1000 the initial and maximum can be yeah, you can check out the tutorial you can change it and keep it the same and i will add this one give me uh for one second give me 10 point or 20 point so 10 point is okay you can change other parameter that you want to uh as a fill output so the last one is that i will uh, give that displacement to a program should determine for me and that was a set called a midpoint set and it's in the default is energy but i'm going to change it to displacement in direction three or not and additionally i should uh, say again give me for 20 or 30 points uh, for that interval of one second now uh, that step is finished we don't do anything in the interaction we go load and the first thing is we apply the pressure uh, on the uh, on the surface of this so i'm going to here and uh, select the surface i can select all and then ask me to uh, uh, apply the uh, the load uh, or the pressure so the pressure is in the z direction so i'm going to uh, keep it uh, the uh, brown part and uh, 20 000 pascal, pascal 20 000 pascal and uh, the second is we have to uh, define the uh, boundary condition so this uh, age will be fixed uh, i can call it fixed uh, this is fixed all direction is fixed and the uh, second is uh, other uh, part, other edge. So this is only uh, free in the U, the rest is fixed. Now we go to the uh, mesh. In the mesh, we will, uh, we can actually uh, go change the mesh type. So the mesh shape should be quad and it's a good mesh and it should be free structure. And uh, okay, now we can uh, give mesh. So this is okay. Even you can uh, use smaller meshes, that would be great. Yes. Uh, so one thing I forgot to uh, uh, mention uh, here is the boundary condition. So in the boundary condition, we should apply that boundary condition in the local coordinates. So I must select, I must select my local coordinate. Uh, use code uh, from our list. So this is the uh, that we early defined. Now we can go to and this one is additionally, and we use the data list that we have defined. Okay. So we have used uh, our local. Now we are done and we go to the job and we create a job called linear linear analysis. You can change the number of CPU user parallelization analysis to so submit. So it was the same, the same uh, linear analysis exists because we already did. And uh, we should wait. The analysis completed. Uh, now the analysis is completed, and we go to the result. And uh, this is the result. And we go to the, the uh, we called the plot control, so we can see the stress distribution. So the important thing is we go to the S1. Uh, we come to the yeah, S1, and you can see the stress is in this direction, and uh, also S2 is a uh, major uh, stress in that point. So. Uh, we also uh, had a previous uh, data output which is called u3 and we're going to plot that one so this is the uh, displacement and within one second so we also can edit it and here is 20 point for us in a negative direction you can multiply this one by 1000 so it become millimeter so additionally you can uh, come here and you see that the formation is uh, in u3 maximum in a negative in this additionally you can see other parameters such as the reaction force in the edge of the plate now what about if we do it as a non-linear so we don't want to change anything else we come to the elastic and we create another one called plastic plastic steel and we do it density uh, seven eight thousand kilonewton per cubic meters and elastic is two hundred thousand 
in power of 9, which is possible, 0 0.3. And now we want to define some plasticity or now we get it. So 350e power of 9, which is from megapascal to change to the Pascal, going to be 0. And uh, we add another rule, which is the ultimate and uh, e power of uh, power of 9 and with strain of 0 0.2 uh, or 20 percent so we have defined a uh, bilinear curve of plasticity and we changed the uh, material in our uh, uh, section so the material is plastic in this time and then uh, we go to the step so we also activate our nonlinear geometry uh, you can also activate in case of avoiding any sort of uh, convergence so this is okay and I'm going to only come to the here, I think a copy, and uh, I can put it called none, nonlinear analysis. So there was this similar, so I'm submitted. Yeah, the analysis also uh, completed. We go to the result, and uh, here is the result. Uh, similar behavior, similar behavior. And we go to the uh, S1 again, S1. Is two. In the previous one, uh, we didn't have the plastic strain, so now we also have plastic strain. We can go to the plastic strain, and we can go see. But the uh, uh, with, with this weight or with this pressure, the structure didn't reach to the yield. So what uh, is next? So go to this one is called linear. U three linear linear, and uh, use uh, the other one is going to be. Uh, I'm going to save it as a U3 non, non linear. Now, uh, both are actually equal. So you can see linear and non linear. So, what is uh, the difference? So, in order to go to the load, in order to go to the load and we uh, uh, make it uh, five times or three times more than then, the structure will reach to the yield. So, let's multiply by five times to get a uh, quite large formation. So we go drop again, and uh, then uh, we can uh, submit this one. Now this also completed, we go to again the, uh, for the results. So the stress strain has uh, become quite large and it's reached to nine, which is, uh, but here is uh, less than the, the uh, uh, stress that we defined, which is the ultimate. So in this uh, uh, point, it means if we increase five times, if we increase five times, still the uh, uh, the displacement is large, but it's in the range of uh, uh, linear or elastic. So uh, we can actually uh, make it ten times, so that definitely will get a very uh, nonlinear response. So I'm gonna make it this one twenty thousand multiplying by the ten, so which is uh, quite large. So in this case, if I go to submit again. But if you submit in the in the linear properties, in the linear with the linear properties, so the displacement will not actually deteriorate. So we want to uh, get some a, car, a curve like uh, like this one, like this one. So the displacement going going and then changing. So again, it's completed, and we can uh, observe the uh, stress strain quite large. Uh, but it doesn't reach. So the maximum stress is uh, 350 in power of 9, which is doesn't. So if I go uh, here, uh, see still it's in the linear. So I'm going to plot it. So it's still in the linear, even the splint I mean, is about uh, 7, 70 millimeter or 7 centimeters. So uh, you can actually uh, multiply that uh, uh, load with uh, 100 times. So if I do it with, with 100 times, so instead of 100, uh, I'm gonna using this one. This is 100 times, or I can take it uh, 20,000 multiplying by 100 times. So definitely, in this time, the structure will show uh, nonlinear response. Again, it's completed. We go to results. Uh, from this, we can understand it's going uh, to uh, quite large, which is quite nonlinear because it's 9.5 power of uh, three. So you can go to see that the formation is quite Large. We go output again and we plot these times. So you can see the curve is changed from linear to nonlinear. So we can actually go to the linear part and we're going to plot it.
So you can see the linear is quite short and the nonlinear is quite different. So we got the, the nonlinear. Additionally, you can uh, you can come to the uh, here uh, ODP output ODP output and uh, select uh, a unique node and then unique node and then take stress uh, stress is one is two in the node set that we already defined so you can see that stress strain is like this if we go uh, in the linear part so that will be as a linear you can see this is the so let me just plot one of them uh, let's go this is the stress behavior in the point. So we can call it, this is called S1 in the X direction, and also we have S2 in the Y direction as well. So this was the tutorial, if you like it, so you can put any, uh, so if you like it, uh, you can uh, comment and subscribe. And if you have any question, please put in the comment and I will find time to answer you. Thank you very much.